All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, obviously, if you've seen the thumbnail, this is gonna be a real simple one for you guys. Um, somebody actually asked me uh, what they could do to stay the warmest while out ice fishing. Um, and I kind of figured this would go for anybody that's new to it, that wants to try it. Um, the only way that I can guarantee most people will have fun ice fishing is if you stay warm. So today's Tackle Tip Tuesday is gonna be the top five ways you guys can stay the warmest when you're walking on water. All right, so what I'm gonna do here for this list is I'm gonna try and simplify it and explain how you can go by doing this. And I'm gonna try and do it in like order of like how, like if you're just starting out, um, say you've never been ice fishing, um, the first thing you would buy, um, basically you're going to have to save more and more money as you go. And it's just like open water fishing. Everybody does this weird thing where they try to say, uh, ice fishing so expensive because of the stuff you need. And it's not, it's the fact that the stuff that you buy isn't an increments over an entire year. It's like an all at once type thing. And then on top of that, what people don't realize is when you're ice fishing, you tend to buy your gear once and and really 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 long time like many many years so depending on how you treat your gear and how well it's made you could buy some of these things once and be good for like 15 years versus like open water fishing you just keep acquiring stuff <laughs> So let's get to this. Uh, the, the point I'm trying to make here is if you're really thinking about getting out on the ice, do it right. Make yourself comfortable. And uh, let me try and help you with that. Okay, so if you guys have been around before um, and you're not new to my channel, you know that I run these Baffin Impacts. I've been doing it for many years. Uh, they are holding up great. I have a couple different kind of review videos and like ways I uh, take care of them to make sure that they last a long time. Obviously, if they look brand new, it's because I take very good care of my stuff. This is where the whole like, you buy it once and it lasts you for many, many years. Versus open water, you buy a new pair of shoes every year or every couple years that you trash a pair of shoes or whatever. I digress. The first thing that I recommend anyone that plans on going ice fishing is a pair of good boots. Now, some people have this misunderstanding about good or like good quality. Personally, I'm a go with the best you can get kind of guy. So these are Baffin Impacts. Uh, obviously it says polar proven right on them. Uh, I just happened to get this model of Baffin because they were really easy to just kind of See, I can do, like, I'm holding the camera, I can pop these off and on with one hand. Um, I just like the quick accessibility of it and, like, putting them on and off. Um, these boots, I think, are rated for, like, a negative 130 degrees or something like that. This is probably the warmest boot I've ever put on my foot. Uh, I've owned a lot of different boots over the years. Um, but when I got into, or got back into ice fishing heavy, um, I don't know how many years ago it was, but uh, when I wanted to get into it like full time, every season, all season again, I wanted a boot that was going to last me and not get trashed. And then on top of that, I wanted something simple uh, that keeps my feet warm. I have basically a somewhat poor circulation in my feet from all the years of extreme sports that I've done. Don't ask, don't tell, just know that I've probably broken my ankles more times than anybody knows. Um... But the, the point I'm trying to make is I have poor circulation, so my feet get cold real easy. And these are probably the, actually no, they are. These are the only boots I've ever wore that have kept my feet warm all day on the ice. Now I will forewarn you guys if you try to get these ones, which I will link in the description below. I, I put all my Amazon links for you guys. Uh, basically it's just a way for you guys to support my channel. Um, but if you're going to get them, I mean, if you want to help support the channel, you can get them through my Amazon link. Uh, I also, I'll have all my other gear listed below that I'm talking about today. But if you're going to get these, I wanted to make sure <laughs> if your feet get hot easy, which I don't know a lot of people that get hot feet, these are going to be too warm for you. So pick a, you know, like a lesser thermal 
great or whatever because like i said these are rated for like a negative 130 degrees below zero so that's basically so like i can stand on the ice so when i'm sitting in my ice house my feet sit on the ice well with nothing below them that cold leaches up usually through a pair of shoes or whatever you're wearing if you're wearing these your feet never get cold and it feels like you're wearing like a big fluffy pair of slippers all day it's so nice <laughs> so luxury but it's an important thing that i tell everyone no matter when you're starting ice fishing you need to pick up the warmest pair of boots that you can feel comfortable in uh walking around in otherwise if your feet get cold you will be miserable and then it's just a bad experience and nobody likes that so get warm boots okay so obviously the boots are a very important thing and i went into detail as much as i could about that uh like i said i have poor circulation and those things keep my feet warm without that i will still fish i'm kind of addicted to the whole walking on water thing but i can tell you right now when you have numb cold feet for a good hour or anything like that you're just in a bad mood anyways so prevent the bad mood get the boots number two so that was number one the boots were number one number two i was debating on this being the second thing but honestly if you're just getting into it this is the way to do it because it's going to be like i said it'll be the cheapest build up thing but the next thing you should get is the warmest pair of gloves you can find that fits you comfortably and that are uh practical for how you fish now that's obviously going to be a little hard for you to figure out if you're just starting fishing um, but I have many, many pairs of gloves and I always carry a spare. I always have a spare. Uh, sometimes I have two spares, so I'll have three pairs of gloves with me and that's in case you stick your hand in the water or something stupid or it gets wet or whatever and you want to switch out gloves. Now, personally, so these are my Striker Ice. Uh, I don't even remember what name these ones were. It's a mitten, but it's, it's just like my Baffin boots. These guys go way up my forearm, so fingers at the end here, go way up my forearm, and that way when I'm wearing my jacket, there's no, like, uh, whatchamacallit, air gap. So, you know, you pull, pull that strap loose and stick that over your jacket sleeve inside there. And I got these when I got a machine for the ice. Uh, personally, it probably would have been nice to just have these at the beginning, even, um, when I first started, because one thing you will notice, every human being has a tolerance <laughs> for your hands getting cold. Well, the problem is, is I've been out with plenty of people now where they say, oh, I don't get cold hands and it's a lie. <laughs> and people, you know, you go out fishing at four or five o'clock in the morning and, that cold air is settling in and you know, you get a little dampness to the air or something like that. And you're, you're out on the ice. Anyone who's anyone knows you can get frostbite in a very short period of time. I actually think I've given myself frostbite a couple dozen times now in my life. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to say that I have a problem keeping gloves on my hands. i like to feel everything and that's kind of counterproductive because your hands do go numb, but sometimes I don't get as cold. I'm going to just go back to talking about these for a second for you. Um, these guys I got, like I said, for running my machine. So if you guys have machines, I can honestly say the Striker Ice Mittens, I don't, like I said, I don't know what brand or the name of these ones are, um, but they're really warm. Um, it's just nice because, so like I have a, a machine with a thumb throttle so I can keep my hand wrapped. This is like a good wind block. And then, you know, obviously the thumb throttle. So when the wind's hitting your hand at 20, 30 miles an hour going across the ice, um, my hands stay extra warm. And then, like, I'll start fishing with these on, but they are cumbersome. It's a big old mitten. So the nice thing about these is they rip off real easy and you can start fishing like that. So a lot of times I'll actually be like this. So I'll have the, the rod and reel in this hand and I'll have this hand that's just sitting there to the side with this on if i'm fishing in the open that is if i'm inside my shack i have both gloves off but that's number two i think a good pair of gloves should be 100 percent in your investment like this is beginning investments mind you but this is the top five ways that i would recommend anyone who's going to go out on the ice stays warm so we're going to go to number three and it's the most expensive part so the boots 
I, I don't know the price ranges. I have them. I'll have them listed below. Uh, same thing with the gloves. I don't know exactly how much they go for, but I know the boots and the gloves are going to cost substantially less than this next thing. But it's one of the top things I can recommend anyone get that plans on walking on water. Um, everybody's going to talk crap about it. I guarantee it. If somebody hasn't said something about it in the comments, I'll be very impressed with you guys for being mature. <laughs> so, all right. So the third thing. And this could actually be your number one thing, but it is the most expensive thing you can buy for personally staying warm on the ice. Now, honestly, this to me, for price, didn't matter. So if you don't know who Striker Ice is by now, that just means you probably haven't been ice fishing for a while. Uh, this is my Striker Ice hard water suit, uh, the jacket and the bibs. Uh, both hard water, uh, I think both 800 denier uh, fabric or whatever. This is like wearing an ice shack. So this is where, like wearing a thermal ice shack. So you really could just get away with the gloves and the boots and this suit. So if you had just the gloves, the boots, and this suit to start out with for staying warm, you would be perfect. This suit, and I'm not even joking, this isn't like a paid endorsement or anything like that. I literally could sleep on the ice with this suit on. When I first got it, I was screwing around and I just like laid in the snow to see if, it, you know, I could feel any kind of drafts or anything coming through. Um, it's got, You can see that little strap right there. It's got a little waistband skirt type thing. You can pull tight. Um, those sit tight around your boots. That sits uh, nicely around your waist. Um, it's pretty appropriately sized. And then... Uh, the biggest thing is like when you're wearing those gloves, a good hat, those boots, and this suit, you honestly can just fish outside the whole time. So it just depends on like the wind and like in your face and how much you got to deal with that. But this floats. So it's got, it's not a life preserver. Like it's not like a legal life preserver. So it's not what you're thinking in that terms, but it's got this buoyant thing. Uh, I think it's called Sure Float. If you see that there, it says it on here. Um, so what it does is when you fall into the water, which you shouldn't be falling into the water if you're doing this appropriately. I have safety videos through my, if you go into my ice fishing playlist, um, I have a couple safety videos and recommendations on like how to stay safe while fishing the ice during the, the, during the winter. But regardless, if you did accidentally fall through, this was the number one reason I bought it, actually. I, I, I always just wore jackets and, uh, like, snow pants or bibs or something like that. But when I bought this, I bought it because I had fallen through the ice. Again, for... I, I don't want to talk about it right now, but I had fallen through the ice before, and this was an instant thing for me to be like, yeah, that's probably a good investment. Uh, like I said, this is going to be the most expensive thing probably you will buy starting out to stay warm. But... It is number three on the list, at least, because if you're if you're out on the ice a couple times and you're cold wearing your regular gear, I promise you, nobody's cold wearing a striker ice hard water suit. Nobody. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Um, I can I have this stuff listed below. Um, like I said, it's another way for you guys to support the channel. So if you guys plan on picking up a suit this fall, please feel free to pick it up through me. I, I can't promise best deals or anything like that, but I can promise it's going to help me uh, film more of these videos for you guys. So hopefully this helps you out. And uh, let's go to number four. And number four is going to seem kind of goofy because you have this, but you'll understand. Okay, so like I said, that suit is, I mean, honestly, you don't have to get that suit per se, but I highly recommend a good warm suit. And there is no reason today in 2020 this winter you shouldn't have a suit that floats that's it that's all i have to say about that <laughs> so take it how you will but if you're not wearing a suit that doesn't float or if you are wearing a suit that doesn't float i don't know how to help you with that <laughs> but we're gonna go to number one two this is four yes one two three four i can count <laughs> this is for those people that are actually going to go in and really want to try it for the first time. And if you get cold easy, if you have all that stuff on, to have peace of mind and to stay out of the wind, 
this right here, let me grab this. This right here is going to be your best investment I can honestly say anybody can make right off the bat. So this is a pop-up shack. So the cool thing about this is you can see it's, I mean, it's almost as big as me. I think the, I think the bigger shacks, this is just an otter cabin. Um, this just happens to be one of the ones that I have, but, uh, so the, the shack itself is like a pop-up tent. So the, it, but the thing is, is the, 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 the part that will keep you warm here is so like, if you're wearing all that other gear, one, that's a thermal shack. So, uh, Buy yourself thermal if you're going to get your first shack. I'm, I'm just advocating it right now because it makes no sense to have non-thermal right now. I know there's tough guys out there. There are a lot of you tough guys. Oh, I don't need thermal. I stay warm just fine. That's fine. That's video. This isn't for you. I don't know why you're watching this video. <laughs> this video is for you guys that want to stay warm, stay comfortable, feel like you're sleeping or you're uh, fishing in your living room type thing. Like comfort. Comfort. Um, that shack is a very inexpensive, uh, nice shack. Uh, it's been through a lot with me. I used it for many years. And uh, the irony is, if you're still here, you're going to like this one. So I've said this in a couple of my other videos, but if you are seeing this one, once I hit 10,000 subs uh, for that winter, so if I hit 10, 10K subs this winter, I'll do it. But if it's in like the middle of summer next year, I'll do it next winter. But if you guys get uh, if you guys get me to 10,000 subs, what I'm gonna do is a complete giveaway setup, including that shack, that specific one that I just showed you guys. It's a thermal otter cabin, two to three man uh, pop up shack, the, the XT cabin, uh, 650 denier fabric, whatever. Uh, I just don't use it enough, <laughs> so it's gonna go into a, a a big giveaway package and I have a lot of other things that I'm going to include in there and actually one of them I'm going to show you after this um so that's but I digress that's number four um if all you did was buy the suit the boots the gloves and the the tent if all if that's the only thing you guys got and then you got yourself a fishing rod and some baits and stuff like that that's different from what we're talking about but you got what you needed to get through the ice and you know fish i can promise you you'll be a happier person on the ice with that stuff uh it's a guarantee if you're not happy on the ice because you're warm on the ice and you're like outside versus sitting at home on your couch doing nothing <laughs> <laughs> when it's out when it's cold outside um I, I don't know how to help you with that but i know for a fact that i feel better when i get out and do stuff in the winter time versus sit around so those just those four things should be good enough but this is the kit. like this is the biggest thing i'm not even gonna cut here this guy right here this is a mr heater buddy heater this is a uh, their smallest like radiator radiator style heater um this buddy heater is going to be your best friend if you get cold easy. So you can run, uh, on this, on these, you can run, uh, one pound tanks, but I run a 20 pound tank with the Mr. Heater attachment hose, uh, like a 10 footer or a 12 footer. And I put my tank outside my shack. So that shack, what you would do is you'd stick the tank outside your shack, you'd run the hose underneath it, you'd pack in your skirt with snow or slush or whatever, and then you'd hook it up to this on the inside in your shack. And a 20 pounder with this right here will run almost all season. I, I mean, literally, if you don't fish all the time like I do, it will run all season. I fish all the time, almost every day there's ice, I'm on it, and it still runs all season. So if you get a buddy heater and you get all of these other things i promise you will be warm on the ice uh like I, one thing i i didn't mention about the suit is you can get too warm in it but the nice thing is it's got uh vents and like the armpits and then like the legs you can unzip from the top down uh so like if you're walking out you can unzip all that stuff to stay cool it lets your body breathe uh but it'll keep you warm still but if you're in a tent and you're sitting in like a pop-up chair or something like that, and you're sitting in your striker ice suit, 
I promise your buddy heater is going to cook you out of there because <laughs> it'll make it like 65 in there in a hurry. And when it's 65, wearing that suit is just not practical. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll bring a hanger and I'll take my jacket off. And when I take my jacket off, I just hang my jacket up on the side. And then by doing that, I still have a long sleeve on. Sometimes I wear t-shirts, uh, but Usually it's just like a, a light breathing long sleeve, but you can get away with sitting inside that specific otter, that exact one in a chair with those boots and that suit on. So I usually just the bibs. And if you have the heater on low, you can fish 12 hours on the ice and keep it at about 55 to 65 degrees inside your shack all day. And yeah, you'll get a little melt in the water and stuff like that. Uh, one tip I have for everybody that's using a buddy heater even if you're if you don't necessarily get super cold or anything like that is put it on something so if you have if you have like a like that thing right there that's what i do so that's my rod case uh when i put my rod case on the ground or on the ice i put my buddy heater on top of that i put my tackle on top of that and for whatever reason, because of that little elevation, I have a lot less ground melt or water melt from the ice top. So you end up just, you know, having a nice heated thing and a lot less slush and water on the uh, on the ground. But those boots, it won't matter. You'll still be warm, even if it gets a little melt on the uh, ground or ice. And I don't know, everything else is basically the key to staying warm on the ice. So I hope today's video helped you guys out. I really do. Um, the big thing is, is I want to see people happy about ice fishing and not wasting their time with it. A lot of people don't understand it. It's mainly because it seems crazy, but it's fun. And it's really one of those interesting things that if you would just get out in the winter and do something, I promise you'd, you'd feel a lot better about what you're doing through the winter time versus like sitting around and getting the, people call it like the midwinter blues and stuff like that. I'm too busy fishing and stuff like that to be miserable in the winter. I actually get happier in the winter, if you guys can't tell. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to some ice videos in the near future. Uh, hopefully we get uh, early ice soon. Otherwise I'm fishing open water uh, up until then. So. Like I said, I hope this video got, helped you guys out. I hope you guys stay warm this winter, stay safe. And uh, obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you are new, please just remember to 